Oh, hello, and welcome to our Today's Decay, celebrating births and beginnings of everything important to all time. I didn't want to do today. It's been a long day. It's been a long week. But I realized I hadn't done this, I guess, before. Like, I've been doing this for years for some reason. And sometimes I miss a day. And I just say, oh, I'll do it next year. Well, I missed this year two years. I missed this date two years in a row. And I'm almost done with the whole year if you put the whole thing together, you know? So this way, I don't have to wait till next year. Here we are doing it. Uh, which, you know, some people have asked me before, what are you doing? And uh, what started off as like a COVID um, coping mechanism, I guess, which was based off of I used to run um, a horror host spook show troupe, or I was part of it, whatever. We all ran together, I guess. Um, <clears throat> down to Coney Island. We all ran down to Coney Island to be there on time. Uh, and I used to conjure ghosts on stage and tell jokes and produce monster movies and go on adventures. And um, all like somehow related to the movie we're gonna show. Sawing up, sawing off arms of uh, uh, audience members by calling them up on stage and doing horrendous acts, conjuring ghosts, having them run through the audience over their heads and leave droppings on them and things like that. Uh, and then, kind of combo platter, I got really into um, Zachary's, Zachary in general, and Zachary specifically his disco teen show in the mid 60s he did where he horror hosted like a live rock and roll show on the East Coast here. So combining all my loves together, um, we took our horror host spook show characters from like the more Coney Island theater stage and brought them to the uh, DJ and live band like Psychobilly Garage um, regular monthly night we were doing at Our Shrunken Head, where now we, the horror hosts, are doing a live rock and roll radio show as monsters at the venue and like introducing bands that way. So like here we are on like the radio being all sorts of ghouls and doing commercial breaks and all this stuff like that. And I don't know, whatever. It just, it, it seemed to make sense at the time. And uh, we made these calendars, which, aha. This is the one of, this is the first year we had these calendars with some of our horror characters on it and it was like the whole year you know it's like you know each month pull away sheets and you've got like all the dates and uh you know important information of like literally what i read off is like just one of these calendars with this we had a couple different iterations this went on for a bunch of years and each year i'd add more and more content that i'd find uh, or just like remember to like retain for next year. And so each year the like tear away sheets, like the the, uh, the um, text size, the font size, whatever would get smaller and smaller. I don't know. Yeah, so anyway, that's what we're doing. We're going off of this thing and it's based off of this calendar we used to make. <laughs> uh, and long stories, short, too late, I know it's not. Today in 1871 is Hans Hein Evers' birthday. And why did I Evers miss his birthday before? I don't know, but we're not gonna do it this time. I mean, we are gonna, we're not gonna miss it this time. Yeah, all right, okay. Roll with me, it's been a long period in time. So here we are with an original 1911 copy of Alruna. Hans Hein Evers was billed as the German Edgar Allan Poe by some people. Um, I guess his books can't kind of get like a worldwide notoriety or at least English language notoriety once they get translated by the, um, I was gonna say Gary Day, but I think it's the John Day Company here in New York, as well as being published in England, other places as well. Um, but like, you know, it was it, he was writing in German uh, uh, for a good deal of his life. Like this is 1911. The translations don't come into play until like the late 20s and through the 30s, at which point he's like ostracized by um, the incoming Nazi regime for um, depicting 
uh, a Jewish woman in like a positive light, even though it's like all about like drug use and vampires and all sorts of like really salacious stuff. Uh, he was really like in 1905, 1910, um, a very good friend with Aleister Crowley and they kind of like shared a lot of ideals together, I guess. And Alruna is part three, I think, of the Frank Brown trilogy. Um, which were very loosely like him running around the German countryside, uh, getting into trouble, laughing at like uh, highly devoted Christian, small minded people, and um, getting into like all sorts of like otherworldly uh, trouble with like the occult in different ways that like, like things wind up getting out of his control. Very often it's like women. Uh, who he starts by like empowering or coaxing into kind of his way of viewing the world in some form or another and then they wind up like taking over and ruining his life in some form or another not just his life but like the lives of like everybody around them very often so it's the sorcerer's apprentice which here is the uh english english translation from like 1927 or so, with these really great illustrations. Ron Blaine, I think is his name, if I remember correctly. Really good twisted stuff, I love it. It's all like as decadent as decadent can be. He's like the uh, the writer, in compa uh, you know, okay, compared to Edgar Allan Poe, but I would more compare him to Otto Dix, the painter. This one here's a German language from like 1923 or something like that. Nightmare. A lot of he did, he did a lot of short stories. Um, a couple of novels, like I was saying. Uh, where's some more? That was Sorcerer's Apprentice. Here is Alruna, the actual first English language version. This has been made into a whole series of different um, films. I think several actually with Brigitte Helm and Paul Vergener. Uh, what else? Plenty more, it just keeps going. Oh, the third one. So it's um, for the, the Frank Brown trilogy Sorcerer's Apprentice, Alruna, and Vampire. Vampire. Oh, look at this. Original dust jacket, beautiful stuff. And really interesting take on vampires as a mythology as well. Um, Really just like drug use and bloodletting and things like that. Here's oddly enough, the Vampire's Prey, the Great Britain uh, alternate title for the same story. Came out the same year, 36 ish in English language. Uh, what else? This is super cool. He was involved really early on. This is like the first ever, before Weird Tales printed, uh, talking about the English German like language divide of you know who, who's writing what, thinking what. Um, Weird Tales isn't actually the first weird fiction um, magazine. It was actually something called the Orchid Garden, which here is the original 1919 whole first year run that uh, Hans Hein Evers was involved with. It's got all sorts of great stuff and it's really delicate and I shouldn't be handling it like this. Look at this. Wild, right? Yeah. Um, Carl, Carl Strobel, Carl, what is it? I got it right here. Uh, the guy that wrote Lemuria. Carl something Strobel uh, was the main editor. It's, his name's gonna be all over here. What am I talking about? All right. I'm not seeing. Carl Hans Strobel was the main editor who um, worked with Hensign Evers on a lot of these details. Really great stuff. Um, there's also a lot of like, this is like pre Weird Tales, like I was saying, which was really what uh, brought a lot of these uh, odd writers who were into the occult together. So prior to that, a lot of this is like Edgar Allan Poe and things that like were, from, were not written in the modern era. Weird Tales is a direct response to the horrors of World War One, and well, I guess Orchid Garden, you could say, is the same. It really is, like, so on the cusp of the end of World War One that 
uh, a lot of the they're pulling from pre-existing content from like sometimes a generation or three beforehand you know whether that's the artwork or whether that's the writing but really exciting stuff anyway uh cocaine let's talk about cocaine because what i'm talking about are all like his originals and uh side reel press is great and has reproed a good deal of his original writing here is a collection collection of cocaine as featured and i nevers yeah it's all like you know again weird fiction um highly suggest it uh and side reel put out all the all the things or they're in the process of putting out all the things i just mentioned including more uh from this era from this writer it's really interesting stuff yeah there you go and sign evers dick bennett aka dr paul Ferrer and Count Shakula, he's both of them, was born today, 1928, who is uh, a horror host who got his start as a horror host in North Carolina and then moves to, I think, St. Petersburg, Florida, um, where he spends like several decades, like from like the 50s through the 80s. When did he stop? Some would say he's never stopped, but I think he stopped in the 80s. He's definitely like was still going strong in the mid 80s, which is quite awesome. Uh, and he's got bug eyes that go in different directions and was like a huge just horror fan himself with like a full run of Famous Monsters Magazine uh, issues and plenty more. So yeah, he was born today, 1928. 1938, Jean Rolin was born. This is an action-packed day. Action-packed, you hear me? Action-packed. Um, I was not into Jean Rolin when I was younger. I think maybe I had read something somewhere. I don't know. Um, it just this was like lowbrow budget porn exploiting like vampire concepts um, for the sake of like trying to get people to buy the videos or or you know I guess take it to the movie depending on the year we're talking about. And uh, yep, yep. Uh, Decades later, I realized I was really wrong. Everything he's done is awesome. The man's a genius. <laughs> uh, I'd start with fascination, um, but then like it just it just keeps going. Uh, even like his more modern stuff. I, some of the early ones like take place like a there's like a car car chase shootout with two gorgeous women dressed as clowns uh, in either car that wind up as almost all of his like classic movies do he winds up like in the, like the french countryside in like a medieval castle and then there's vampires and things and like everything is always like just rotting medieval french castle and vampires and uh yeah gorgeous women and blood and um whether these were like exploitative reasons to uh to buy these movies in some form or another hook line and sinker right here all for it yeah. Uh, okay. All right. What else? Tom Savini, born today, 1946. You know, the man. Um, 1954, two creatures that are larger than life, not other than Godzilla himself. The 1954 Japanese Godzilla premieres today. And Adam Ant, born today, also 1954. Yeah. Uh, the film Carrie premiered today, 1976. And The Damned released The Black Album, 1980. Solid, solid album. Probably too much filler on there, but still a solid album. All right. Uh, oh, I didn't even show Yeah, I forgot. I had this. Hand sign Evers. Here's my uh, postcard of him from the 20s, just to show you. Maybe even teens? I don't know. That monocle he's got on there. Well, I guess what I didn't mention was... Um, he was like an early fan of the, or supporter of like the uh, National Socialists in the teens and twenties. I think just because he like loved Germanic folklore and stuff. Uh, and then when they came to power, shortly thereafter, they uh, made they burned his books and like made him an enemy of the state uh, because he was bisexual and like i said like you know told stories about 
Jewish people not not being subhuman. And he winds up, even though he was like a huge star. Oh, I didn't show you this one. He also did, um, now I'm going out of order. He did this here. He wrote, he wrote multiple screenplays that became films. Here's The Student of Prague, which this is actually a combination photo play of the Paul Bergener and Conrad Veidt, uh, 1913-1926, Student of Prague. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Uh, all about like a dramatic deal with the devil where a uh, down his luck student sells his soul, quote unquote, to the devil for a pot of money to impress a girl and like social standing. And the way they depict it is that a uh, the character's mirror image jumps out of a mirror and becomes like, you know, all the like negativity or like an evil version of the doppelganger of like the person who is supposedly good, quote unquote good. And uh, the two of them have to Come to terms with each other somehow or another, right? Yeah. Um, what's my point? Hanside Evers, huge star. Dies penniless on the streets of Nazi Germany. Uh, An outcast and criminal. Yeah. Uh, there you go. November 3rd. All day. Exciting things for you to enjoy. Today. And every November 3rd. Until the dawn. End of time. <laughs> I'm done. Good night. Till tomorrow.